Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another fantastic episode of GameStack Podcast, right here on We Just Love Games Network. This is episode 116. Some say the Pico is better. I'm your co-host, Vendertron. Joining me this evening is also Shaleen. Hello, Shaleen. Oh, 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 say that again. They didn't quite hear. Hello. There we go. Hello. How are you doing? How's your week? Ah, I, I don't want to talk about it. It was bad. It was really bad. <laughs> oh, no. Ooh. But nobody nobody drank rubbing alcohol today, to my knowledge. Oh, that's so right. We're a step up from last I week. I forgot about that. Yes. I didn't have to call 911 once today. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, that's a win in my books. Um, yeah, it's it's been a rough week at work, though. It's, it's yeah. been pretty bad. Yeah, I yeah I've been in conference for the last three days, so I'm kind of like out of it. Um, I I may or may not have spent the entire day playing Satisfactory <laughs> whilst attending the virtual conference, uh, possibly. Um, that was research. Well, I mean, it's nice because you can just like listen in, and I can't really do any actual like writing or like co- really intense thinking. Mm-hmm. When you're at these conferences, because it just and it kills me to just sit in front of the screen, because here's the thing. This is how this is the format. Tell me if what you think about this. So they had like panelists and stuff and like people would speak and Mm -hmm. that was all fine. But when they did those sessions, like the poster sessions or the oral presentations, the presenters pre-recorded their presentation so the moderator said, and now we're going to introduce blah, 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 who's presenting on this. And then they would just hit play. And I we would have to watch a video for 10 minutes. And then the presenter would be there to answer questions afterwards. So why didn't they present? Exactly. That is so weird. It was the weirdest thing. Like, I get that it's a virtual environment, but like. Getting Bethesda people to did pre-record. that for E3 one year. It's Remember that? It's so weird. It's just dumb. It's really weird. It was so disengaging. Anyways, they sent this evaluation after the, the conference today, and I just, like, went you off. Have it. I was yeah. like, you, like, this is, like, really something you should think about for next year because. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Choices were made. Some of them were bad. Yes. Um, welcome to the show. Uh, we are Rickless and Reckless. I think this is part seven or something. Eight, maybe. I feel like the last one. Um, we love you, buddy. Sad you can't be here. But, you know. Yeah. Um, he will hopefully join us next week. I'm pretty sure that he's been, like, kidnapped by the Rolling Stones. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yeah, because he, like, didn't set up their gear right or something. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> on their tour bus right now. Yeah. Um, if you are coming in live, happy Friday to you. Welcome to the end of probably what is a very long week for most of us. Hop into those PJs or don't. I don't really care how you listen to our show as long as you listen. Um, grab yourself a snack. Make yourself comfortable because you've got I mean, Shalina honestly, and I tonight. We don't even care if they listen as long as they click play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you for that click, dears. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of clicks, you might want to head on over to oakandcrow.com uh, because our show is sponsored by Oak and Crow Coffee. If you head on over to their website, you can pick up a bag of We Just Love Coffee Blend and two dollars from every bag goes to the children's miracle network and also don't forget hardware's fleet for kids is ongoing he has now reached oh gosh i'm not even sure um he has now reached uh, i think he passed 500 dollars. to be honest with you i have the that's one here's the tiltify let me just pull this up quickly um oh weird I can't see it for some reason. Anyways, Hardware Suite for Kids, which is part of the... Oh, he's up to $607. It just took a little bit of time. Uh, It's part of the official launch for St. Jude Play Live 2022. Happening... uh, Well, it happened on April 8th. But the campaign is ongoing until the end of this month, which is May. And uh, if you're interested in participating in that or donating for children's um, research uh, at St. Jude's, you can certainly do that by searching Sailing for Charity 
2022 on Tiltify. Or alternatively, you could search Hardware's Fleet for Kids uh, on Tiltify as well. But um, yeah, it's it's great. We did a we did a server takeover on Saturday um, last weekend, and there was a bunch of us that were streaming and we all had his link up and we were taking oh, donations great. and it was lots of fun. So we got him past the halfway mark and I guess he's, he's um, up to $607 now. So that's great. And now we're going to plan a server takeover for a Sunday. Yes. Yeah. I gotta, yes. I gotta follow up with him. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, yes. Anyways, host, Host us if you're listening live. Hit that host button. Tell your friends about the show, and um, don't forget to, you can also join our Discord. We have a we have a thing called Discord. It's weird. Shalene, why don't you tell them about it? Well, it's this place. It's it's sort of like a forum, an online forum from back in the day, and uh, we just all hang out in there and share gifts with each other and um, inappropriate videos, that kind of thing. Inappropriate videos. Um, yeah, oh my. Just, so that's what you do with Discord, right? I mean, um, we've got a, a whole room in our Discord dedicated to plants, which is one of my favorite <laughs> rooms in the Discord. <laughs> just go in and look at flowers and, and beautiful plants. Yeah. And if you would like to look at these beautiful plants, if they would make your day better the way they make my day better, you can join our Discord by clicking on the link right below the screen. And that link is live, even if we aren't live. So at any time of the day or night, you can visit twitch.tv slash we just love games and click on that link to join our discord. Alternately, you can send us a DM on Twitter or whatever, and we'll get you the link. I, I kind of mm. fell apart there halfway through that thought. Yeah. Sorry. Um, the discord is like, it, it's, it's the focal point of our whole community. Really? It's really, it's genuinely the best way to contact one of us uh that's that's a host of the show and more importantly it's it's a very excellent way to meet fellow listeners mm -hmm. and you'll find that you have a lot in common with a lot of the people in there and it's really great because everybody comes from such different backgrounds and has such different lives but we all just get along and yeah it's lovely yeah and it's 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 strange because it's not just about games like we have a companions channel which i don't know if you've checked it today but there's all kinds mm. of baby chickens in there baby chickens <laughs> excuse me i'll be right back well oh! shalene is shalene is gone chickens! um uh oh. we have a companions channel where you can post your fr your friendly free pets when um, oh, the Titanic has posted his bird. Mm -hmm. I love his bird. It's so cute. Um, we have screenshots and stories, which we're going to share that with you later. We have the lobby, which is sort of the junk drawer of the podcast. Everything goes there where it, if it doesn't fit somewhere else. Um, My favorite thing is the joke bot. Let's let's have a live interaction with the joke spot. A woman is on trial for beating her husband to death with his guitar collection. What? Judge says, first offender. She says, no, first a Gibson then offender <laughs> oh oh no rick's not here to laugh at that <laughs> he would get a he would get a kick out of that um <laughs> okay um anyways that's the discord i would love to take you through all the channels because it's ridiculous um but uh particularly shout out to titanic who is feeling a little under the weather this week so we hope that you're feeling better he's posting in all kinds of channels i'm not sure if he knew yes <laughs> Where he we wanted to post it, but we hope that you're back afloat soon. <laughs> okay, so we've got a show. We've got some news. We've got some gameplay. Um, we got D D D D, and also a game science segment this time. And then Shalene and I are going to go through some of the weekly screenshots and what we've been playing. So, without further ado, this just in. Who doesn't love a good lawsuit? You like a good lawsuit, hey, Shalene? I love them. I just, I adore a I'm good lawsuit. I'm sorry you hit that mute button like you were going to go do some shopping <laughs> um, while I started the news, uh, which is fine. It's fine. Because um, I was just going to talk about. Well, I was, yeah, I was, I was looking for a new graphics card. Oh, so. well, look no further. You might want to choose NVIDIA because they're going to have to pay $5.5 
in damages for allegedly hiding how many gaming GPUs were sold to crypto miners. Okay, okay, wait a minute. I don't understand why they're fined for this because can't they sell their stuff to whoever they want to sell it to? That's a good question. So, um... Like, I, I hate that it's all going to the crypto miners. Don't get me wrong. I would rather it go into the hands of gamers that will love and treasure them. But right. they, it's capitalism and you can sell whoever you darn well please, right? Like, that's, it depends. It's America. It depends. NVIDIA has investors. Is NVIDIA not based in America? NVIDIA has investors. So the U.S. Securities Ooh. and Exchange Commission announced the charges and a settlement with the company as of today. And this article comes to us from um, Addie Robertson over at The Verge. So thank you, Addie. Um, but um, the the U.S. s &E, or SEC, sorry, um, Orders claims NVIDIA misled in investors by reporting oh, they lied a to huge their boost in. Yeah, so they reported a huge boost in revenue that was actually related to gaming, which actually hid how much its success was actually relying on the volatility of the crypto market. So, yeah, the investors were thinking, like, yes, this is a nice, stable thing, the, the, but no. Yeah. It was not. NVIDIA is not admitting to any sort of wrongdoing um, as part of the settlement, but they are agreeing to stop any sort of unlawful failures to disclose this information to their investors. Um, these charges specifically stem from NVIDIA's fiscal year of 2018 financial reports. The SEC noted that they saw an explosion in crypto mining related sales in 2017 and the rewards of mining Ethereum grew dramatically. Um, and and this is also what has led to the GPU scarcity, right? Um, so, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's now starting to sort of rebound. Um, supply and demand is starting to balance out a little bit more. But um, as you can as an if you can imagine yourself as an a, an investor in this company, if there's a shortage of product, how does that mm -hmm. you know right? So. Um, well, as an investor, I would feel I would just feel fury about being lied to. No one likes to be lied to in any circumstance. But when it's, you know, large amounts of your money on the line, you really want somebody to be dealing straight with you. Yeah. So um, in light of this news, NVIDIA stock dropped about one and a half percent today, which is not really that much. But we'll see how this plays out over the next month or so um its stock is sort of leveled off for the most part but at one point um this this time last year the stock was nearly double what it is actually it's more than double what it is today which is 186.75 us wow um and so i mean and that is that is part of the the whole crypto um fanaticism i guess i want to say uh, but anyways, that's enough about NVIDIA. They're getting sued. It's all fine. Um, this next article, I'm not... Shalene, do you want to talk about this one? Yes. So EVE Online is a weird game, right? Do you know much about EVE Online? Not really. EVE Online is fascinating because it's it's the Excel spreadsheet of games. Uh, it's these, these people that play EVE Online. It fascinates me. They... It's it's the economy is is real in the game. It's it's driven by the players, and um, it's it's just it's fa it's really hard to describe Eve Online, but uh, they there's a lot of of data that needs to be managed, and it's very very complicated. And if you were a serious Eve Online player you're going to find yourself making a lot of spreadsheets and have you played now this? have you played this? i never played eve i shock i That's don't shocking. have the time yeah you've got real real eve. spreadsheets that you're dealing i with. do I, I i yes i uh i've always wanted to try eve but i just i can't i just can't you're more of um, more of an adam girl it's it's the it's the <laughs> Tender. Rick's not here. I've got to make up for it. <laughs> this is the kind of game that becomes your life um, 
for sure. But they have announced a collaboration with Microsoft, which is mm. exciting. No, you're not going to find EVE Online coming to Xbox or, or anything or Game Pass or anything like that. It is specifically a collaboration with Excel. Uh, so you can export your stats directly to an Excel spreadsheet. You know, you might be onto something here. What if people? I wish all games did this. What if people could put Excel, PowerPoint, and Microsoft Word on their Xbox? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it would make it less painful sometimes. Yeah. There's... On weekends like this, when I have to bring work home, if I could just tackle that Excel spreadsheet yeah. with an Xbox controller, you could be a couch employee. <sighs> Yes, it'd be <laughs> glorious. Just have some some Doritos and honestly, and though, that gets controller. me thinking about other games. You know, like Sea of Thieves, for example. It would be really nice to have some sort of third party supporting app that where I could just check everything off. Like they've got, you could access mm -hmm. all of that through their web base, their website. Um, but it's like, not smooth. No, though. right? It's and not a good experience. The same for a lot of other games as well. Like. It would just be really nice to. I think I've talked about the the massive life destroying spreadsheet that Archon Sent has introduced me to yeah. in Fallout 76. Mm -hmm. Yes. For collecting all of the plans and all of the outfits and all of the stuff. And if there was a way where I could just export my known plans to an Excel spreadsheet, that would be so much easier than what I'm doing with screenshotting and taking notes and trying to trying to make sure that I, I wasn't too sleepy to remember to mark it off and that kind of thing. So that's one thing I love about Satisfactory is that's actually built into the UI. So like you can create to do lists and um mm -hmm. like milestones and check them off and then there's a whole index where you can just hit n and type in what you want to search about the it's really mm -hmm. handy um i think no man's sky is kind of like that too like they've got a really good like info mm -hmm. panel um and tracking of of things like that but i think a game like stardew or even animal crossing would benefit very heavily from being able to export to a spreadsheet yeah I would love that. <laughs> I think it'd be really cool too for living games like or like servers where you could just like log in and then see the status of your game. You know, like like if somebody comes over to your Fallout house and rings your doorbell, it could be like that the ring app for doorbells where you I love it. you could see somebody at your door. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Like, oh, I'm going to pretend I'm not here. <laughs> Uh yeah. Anyways, whew, we've got some wild imaginations. <clears throat> um, yeah. Anyways, speaking of reaching milestones and checking things off the list, um, this next article that comes from uh, to us from Polygon by Ryan Gilliam, uh, talks about how the Hall of Fame, the video game Hall of Fame, has released their new list. And upon it, some pretty big contenders. The Strong National Museum of Play in Rochester, New York, which we've talked about previously on the show, um, hosts the Video Game Hall of Fame every year. And they announced on Thursday that The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Miss Pac-Man, Sid Meier's... I think you mean Akinara? Akinara of, of Time, yeah. 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 Um, Miss Pac-Man, Sid Meier's Civilization, and Dance Dance Revolution comprise the hall's class of 2022 so um specifically the uh miss pac-man uh was referred to as something that was had more sophisticated enemies mm -hmm. um and mazes in comparison to the original pac-man and more importantly its representation um wrote miss um er, sorry the representative for the museum wrote that Miss Pac-Man helped change the idea that video games were just for men. So, um, felt like I was doing it like a hair dye ad there for a second. <laughs> just for men. <laughs> um, dance. Oh my goodness. <laughs> See, uh, Miss, Miss Pac-Man. These guilty feet have got no rhythm. Wait, I don't have feet. Um, apparently Siri wants to be part of that conversation as well. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, 
We've replaced Rick. We have a new third host. <laughs> yes. Uh, what were you going to say, Shaleen? Uh, I was just going to say that Miss Pac-Man was my jam at the Pizza Hut when I was a child. Uh, you know, you you get those, uh, you read so many books yep. and then they give you a free pizza at Pizza Hut. I don't know if they still do that for children, I, does but pizza it was a Hut thing that exist? my generation grew up with. I've seen one recently. I don't. I don't know if it was open or if it was just like a husk of a pizza hut. But anyways, I'll go to the pizza hut to redeem my free pizza and I'd be so happy. And I, I would just sink more than the cost of a pizza in quarters into the Ms. Pac-Man mission. <laughs> it's glorious. Um, anyways, Dance Dance Revolution uh, was also highlighted because of its influence on the genre of peripheral based music gaming, especially the mainstream phenomena that came later in Guitar Hero and what you know as Rock Band. Uh, Civ also was praised as the series that highlights creation over destruction, something that still isn't necessarily common to video games these days. And uh, this was certainly less in 1991. And finally, the legend itself, the legend of Zelda, Okunara of Time. Uh, this game, which, of course, um, defined the late 90s and moving into the 2000s, uh, particularly around its 3D capabilities uh, and really influenced the gaming generation um, for, for many, many years after that and is spotlighted on its influence um, perceived at the time as modern de game development. And so this class joins uh, 32 other games in the World Video Game Hall of Fame. And um, if you're interested in seeing the rest on that list, you can also head on over to Polygon and search that article up. So, um, Speaking of things being recognized also, uh, it's... It's um, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month this month. So the month of hey. May. Yeah. And uh, GameSpot did a really nice article acknowledging this um, and s just talking about how video games are actually really lagging behind when it comes to South Asian representation. And um, I, this article comes from uh, Sania Ahmed as I said, over at GameSpot. And they go to go on to talk about how entertainment mediums are, in the West particularly, are um, starting to introduce more Asian um, characters and, and protagonists into the fiction of their video games and steering away from the history um, that is predominantly more or less inclusive, I should say. And, um, you know, I think that this is a really good step in the right direction. Uh, the It's important, I think, also to recognize that the term South Asian is incredibly broad. Um, it includes mm -hmm. almost 2 billion people across multiple countries, and uh, all of which have very diverse experiences and backgrounds, um, and many of which who are video game developers themselves. Uh, and representing people in not only in the industry, but um, in video games. And so uh, I think it's important to be able to represent um, those people in and and other um, other people as well in, in video games, especially when it comes to trying to like, you know, diversify and representation is so important. Yeah. It just really is. I, I, I specifically remember every time that I, I saw a Hispanic person in a video game, you know, and, and no, probably not every time, but I remember it being a notable thing. Yeah. And it was so cool to see that aspect of myself portrayed in a game. Mm -hmm. And everyone deserves that experience. Mm -hmm. uh, Raj Patel, who is senior brand manager for Relic Entertainment, offered up a comment for this article and says that he feels like South Asian characters in games are included as an afterthought and that while we might be seeing more South Asian faces, there is very little beyond this point. So you'll see a character that looks South Asian, but we're not seeing South Asian stories or characters, yes. uh, yeah. which is both good and bad, Patel said, but you don't want to have that every time there is a South Asian. They have to be playing a South Asian character uh, like speaking to South Asian stories specifically, normalize it, 
normal characters just can just mm-hmm. be South Asian, but you want to go a step further and sometimes see uh, the stories being told. So I thought that this was a really cool article um, and it's something that we should talk about on the show and important Absolutely. to acknowledge that. So yeah. Any other comments? Yeah. Not really. I think that quote that you just read for us was a really excellent way to to look at both sides of the good and bad. Yeah. I, I, that was so well said. I'm so glad you found this article. The other thing, too, that I never really thought about is like South Asian video game developers working on countless hours, by the way, uh, developing, developing video games, complex characters and story plots around white people mm-hmm. has got to be a little bit jarring a little disheartening yeah Yeah. right so um yeah i'm I'm glad to see that this is sort of changing it's also lame to always be represented in the form of a sidekick yeah it's it's yeah it's it's nice to be a protagonist once in a while Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yeah i i really don't know how to segue into this this next story but um well (laughs) you know i was thinking about um Today, I was I was really focused on some spreadsheets and I was like lost in my memories while I was doing this. And I, I just kind of time traveled in my mind back to E3. And I remembered going to the Nintendo booth and just asking to see Miyamoto. And they said, are you crazy? And security <laughs> dragged me away. What? Oh, that reminds me. Have you heard about the latest news from Kanye West? <laughs> There's no way. No, tell me you about can't. it. It's just, I'm trying so hard. Um, Kanye West has reportedly pitched an unreleased video game about his mother ascending to the heavens directly to Nintendo legend Shigeru Miyamoto at E3 2015. This was some old news. Um, well, I mean, it happened in the past, but it's new news. Um, yeah, it, prior to the game's public reveal... It is claimed that Kanye West attempted to persuade Nintendo to take on the project by speaking to Miyamoto himself. And, um... Yeah, he just just walked up to the Nintendo booth and said, hey, can I talk to Miyamoto? (sighs) Yeah. And I... I, Yeah, I I don't know really how to to talk about this. Um, (laughs) It's incredible. (laughs) Miyamoto reportedly overheard and began recounting an anecdote about the previous E3 via his translator. And he said, um, Ryan, uh, so I should back up here, former IGN employee and current Twitch lead community producer Zach Ryan uh, claimed on Friday that in the early 2016, uh, he traveled to New York to interview Miyamoto for Star Fox Zero. uh, and, And Ryan had tweeted out, He said that Kanye had shown up at the Nintendo booth unannounced and asked for an audience with Miyamoto specifically right then and there. (laughs) He went on to say that Kanye showed him the prototype for a video game. In it, you played as Kanye's late mother flying to heaven, set to a soundtrack conducted by none other than Kanye West himself. I think the thing is, I think I would probably play this game. (laughs) Okay, but wait, there's more. He was shaking his head as he described it, not like he thought it was a bad game, but more so in the way that he just sort of couldn't believe that Kanye West was pitching him a video game. <laughs> so um, after describing the look on the of the game and how it played, Miyamoto also goes on to say that at the end of the story, he nodded and said it was very interesting. There was a long pause and he added, it was very moving. <laughs> Then he laughed really hard and said Kanye West wanted to make a game with Nintendo and then in English, wow, and gave me two thumbs up. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's incredible. So, you know, I what what do you say about this? Um Kanye West, you got to admire his vivaciousness, you know? <laughs> like it's not every day somebody just decides that they Oh wait, never mind. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm scrolling through the video. If you go to like two minutes, 30 seconds, you get footage of of the game. Oh, there's his mama going to heaven. This is incredible. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me bring this up for our our peeps. 
Okay, okay. Oh, she's riding a Pegasus, you guys. Two, two minutes? Oh, oh. I want to play this game. This is glorious. Okay, so it's Tidal Studios. This is actually beautiful. I mean, this game is probably never going to exist. You never know. You never know. Almost certainly never going to exist, but I think if it does come out, I'll I'll play it. And there's, <laughs> there's Ma going up to, to the heavens. Only one, the game, it's called. Wow. Wow. You got to admire, you got to admire his perseverance. Like, you know, he tried to run for president. That didn't turn out for him. So maybe he thought, oh, I'll go into video game development. Such a nut. He is, he's just, <laughs> he's insane. I just, I, I've been actually like worried about his well-being. Well, I think lately. he's going the route of. Coming out. He's going through some stuff. Rodney, Rodney. Yeah, he's, Rodman. He's dealing with Rodman. things. Um stuff um, and things so the other thing that i was going to say about that is that do you remember one of those past episodes that we did where we talked about how god's not something that's really represented in video games yeah that's that's an old conversation hi rick rick's in the chat ah rick's there excellent um so yeah that was that was it kind of jogged my memory that that heaven we've never we've never played heaven in a it's, video game. it's rare it does exist it's rare i think i mean obviously kind of some religious connotations there right like not mm -hmm. every video game developer is just going to incorporate god into the yeah well i mean there's all there are some it's been done it's been done um usually it's hell though <laughs> where you go in video games you usually go to hell uh what's that one that tim loves doom doom and then there's there's like a, I think Diablo they goes should, to hell. Do you go to hell in the, Diablo? The, who makes Doom? Uh, f Id. Id. Id Software. They should develop a a prequel or a sequel called Bloom, in which you you go to heaven instead, <laughs> and you got to fight all the angels. <laughs> that game is called Bayonetta. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Anyways, so that was a weird thing. Kanye did a thing. Um, speaking of tiny, tiny things, um, <laughs> um, this next article comes to us by Robin Keery over at Hackaday. And uh, there's, there's, hold on to your butts because there's a new video game. What do you call it? A console, maybe? A platform. Platform. Um, if, so, yeah, go, I, the thing ahead. is, I've always wanted to play a video game in my car, but I just can't afford a Tesla <laughs> vendor. I just, I can't do it. And I live so far out. There's nowhere to charge the thing. If I, if it stops, you know, I'll just be out there with a solar panel waiting for the sun to come out. I don't know if that's probably not something you can do with a Tesla, but I, I would be stranded and die and you'd find my whitened bones by the side of the road. So I'm going to have to find another way to play video games in my car. Hmm. Can you help me? Well, I might have just the thing to interest you, Shaleen. Game and Light. Have you heard of Game and Light? No, tell me more. Game and Light is a tiny handheld games platform with an OLED screen. Small enough to attach to your keychain and comes with an LED to act as a mini flashlight. It's so cute! But of course, the main feature is the included video game. Currently, it comes with LED Boy Adventures, a side-scrolling platformer similar to Google's T-Rex uh, game. And um, uh, it currently... Sorry, uh, the USB port can be used to recharge the device as well as to upload new games, which I think is just awesome. Um, it's, it's, I've got some like Tamagotchi vibes. I don't know if you guys mm. can see this on the, on the screen, but it's adorable. It's a little eight bit and they're, they're all cute and stuff. Um, apparently the, um, the game and light is housed in a 3d printed case and powered by a lithium ion capacitor that can store enough charge for around 40 minutes of playtime, uh, which is actually pretty good. And the CPU is an ATiny 402 8-pin microcontroller with 4 kilobytes of flash memory. 
<laughs> so the thing that confuses me very much is where is the button? You need at least one button to be able to call it a video game. You know, you've got to have a way to interact. Yeah. So um, I don't I don't the article doesn't really allude to how it works. Um, but apparently the system is fully programmable and open source. So if you want to create your own game on this little device, you can do that. So, yeah. I am just uh, clicking through their gallery, trying to, trying to figure this thing out. Yeah. I'm not sure. Like I've, there's a little, maybe it's just like a, a pressure. Oh, here it is. And you just here it is. Let me, let me show you. Okay. So here's, here's okay. the, the little console. Ah, here we go. Oh, it's on the top there. The button's there's on the button. top. There's a little charge port. It's looks, looks pretty simple. People are like, is that, a, is so that a pager? Cute. Is that a pager yes. on your belt? No, it's just my... Call me, beat me if you want to reach me. It's my Neo Nano. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's great. I hope they sell a lot of them and people enjoy them. It's really cute. Yeah. Um, on to... That's it for the news. Yeah, I thought we had more, but that's it. Um, I got distracted, so went on to something else. But we also have stocks to talk about. I gotta fix that bumper. It's like way too long. Tell us about the stocks this week, Shalene. Well, you're supposed to fade out the bumper and then start in the middle of the bumper. I gotta do some audio. That's work. yeah, that's that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. Um, but game stock, Sony, it's down uh eighty-three dollars and sixty-six cents, down a dollar twenty-seven. Oh, I was like My down eighty-three dollars and six. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry. Microsoft is also down by two dollars and sixty-two cents, mm. closing at two seventy-four seventy-three U.S. dollars. Nintendo is down forty-one cents to fifty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents. Probably the the news that they decided not to go with the uh, the Kanye game. Mm. With the yeah, I'm sure that news breaking is is going to tank Nintendo. Take two is down a whole five dollars and ninety-six cents to one fourteen twenty-seven. Activision is sitting at $77.84, down 92 cents. Ubisoft is at $49.50, up $1.92. EA is up also $4.32, sitting at $115.29. And Tencent has dropped $1.57 to $43.43. And I believe when we first started reporting Tencent, their stocks were worth like 10 bucks. And they've they've grown a lot. Well, that they've, company worries me a lot. They've with all the acquisitions there. Bought a lot of things. Yeah, they bought yeah. a lot of companies, right? So, I don't like how much control over the industry they're getting. Well, I mean, Microsoft still has way more control. Oh, you I say? know, but uh, also uh, Microsoft is an American company and won't be forcing Chinese video game regulations on us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, good point. Well, I'm, yeah, the stock market is, I don't know. Everybody's like, uh, we're heading into like a crash. <laughs> oh, really? Is that, is that the latest news? Um, I don't know. Maybe don't really care. I should probably sell what I have though. <laughs> or maybe don't. That's how crashes happen. Don't sell your I still, stuff. I still have my three Nintendo stocks. I think, I don't know how they're doing. I haven't checked on them in months. Hmm. Yeah, well, I guess I guess we just did check on them. They're they're down by forty one cents. Oh, really? So, yeah. Hmm. Well, that's that's game stock. Um, I do have a game science segment for you guys this week. Ooh. That's the new bumper for the game science segment. I hope you love it. I feel like something went wrong with the science. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a great article that is coming from the, oh gosh, what university is this? Denver. Um, this article comes to us from Helio Ophthalmology, written by um, Alex Young. And it talks about 3D video games and how they're actually uh, been recently found to boost stereo uh, acuity. 
If you don't know what stereo acuity is, it is the ability to detect uh, differences in distance using uh, stereoscopic cues uh, that's measured by the smallest difference in, in the images presented to your eyes um, that you can detect. And so um, Lee and colleagues, uh, researcher, sorry, Betty Lee, uh, told Helio that our previous study showed that 3D video games help to improve stereo acuity. Uh, we took a second look to see if it would modify contrast with the immersive 3D game experience. Lee and colleagues recruited 24 healthy adults with the limited previous video game experience for the study. 12 participants in the treatment group played 3D first-person shooter games for 40 hours, while 12 participants in the control group played the 2D version of the same game for the same amount of time. Stereo acuity, acuity and contrast sensitivity were measured before and after the intervention, which of course is the video games, or 3D, I guess should, I should say. And uh, the participants in the treatment group, the participants that, that par participated in the 3D video games, um, showed an improvement of 33.5% in stereo acuity after playing 3D games. Uh, and that, that figure is also statistically significant. Um, but there was no improvement in contrast sensitivity. And uh, there was no significant change in stereo acuity in the control group of people playing 2D video games. So Lee said that it was unclear why the games improved stereo acuity, but not contrast uh, and uh, the researchers also hope to continue to explore more uh, 3D video game environments to see how they might help patients with um, am amblyopia. What is amblyopia? It's a, what is that? Um, that's lazy eye. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and so Lee went on to say, you know, we're looking to see if it's further along the pathway. We're going to see if there's a different way to test contrast, but maybe it's in a different spatial frequency. We're looking more into the details here, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I, I always love these stories about like 3d games and, and how they're being used for like mental health and, post-traumatic stress syndrome we and... all know that games can make our lives better yeah and i love when they do science to prove it yeah. anyways um that's the game science segment we also have some stuff to talk about in terms of what the community is playing um this first image comes to us from rtz13 and uh let me just let me just load up what he wrote in the discord he says, guys, the more I hear about Elden Ring, the more I'm inclined to take it off my wish list. Oh, I don't think that has anything to do with this. <laughs> um, he says, so recently I've been playing this little game called PowerPoint. It's full of the same guys who did Flight Sim Simulator and doing a presentation at a conference in two weeks time. But the achievement for completing the tutorial has not yet popped up. <laughs> And I don't know. I don't think the graphics are quite as good as Flight Sim. <laughs> For our audio listeners, it's just a screenshot of Microsoft PowerPoint and the classic template click to add title slide. Um, and then in brackets, he added, you can do this. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of clever. Uh, what else have we got here? Let me scroll to the next one. This image comes to us from Taz. Uh, and he says that this is the gunship NX-1 from Space Engineers. So it's a, for audio listeners, it is a very cool looking spaceship with um, this really cool glass cockpit hovering over some sort of planet. I wonder if he built the spaceship himself. I, I feel like I feel like Space probably. Engineers indicates that he probably built it himself. Space Engineers is wild. You can build it yourself. Um, that's really fun yeah i i bought it but i haven't gotten into it because it's a little bit intense so mm -hmm. uh he also sent us this picture from state of decay 2 fighting a juggernaut in the distance with a zombie wearing a traffic cone on its head um and i love it it's like this picture of the <laughs> it's literally has a traffic cone on his head it's adorable i'm a big fan of traffic cone zombie <laughs> love him um and this last one for today is uh, Sunrise at the Base Camp in Planet Nomads. And uh, it's a picture of basically first person and it, the sun, sunrise is coming up and there's trees and it looks really nice and serene. Lovely. Mm -hmm. 
Um, oh, I also have. Oh, Taz is in the chat. He said he he did build the spaceship. Oh, he did. Nice. Um, I actually have an entry as well this week. Um, as soon as I, I can pull it up here. Um, Windows G is a little bit. There it is. Oh, oh, oh. There it is. Um, he. Uh, I'm just going to quickly post it in here. And, okay. And then. So. Um, so I, I've been playing a lot of Satisfactory. Right. Satisfactory. Um, totally addicted to Satisfactory again. It's it's really not a good thing. Anyways, here's the picture of. Oh, I got to like zoom out. Here's my factory. Oh my goodness gracious. Um. So. so How many hours did this take? Um. Two full days of conference. <laughs> so like, like yeah, like probably like sixteen hours. I mean, I, I didn't I didn't play it completely through like it was like on and off and you could do things quite quickly. But I've I've watched a few tutorials. Um, Jess and I have gotten really into satisfactory. We're like totally addicted and we're like <laughs> messaging each other throughout the workday and be like, well, what if we did this? Oh, we should probably consider making it like this. And yeah. So anyways, this is my factory. And uh, over on this side, this is like copper over here. And then the copper goes through this thing and it goes over into these storage containers. And then I've got little bags of concrete going into storage oh. containers. And then over on this side, I've got screws and bars and metal plates. And they're all, they're actually made back in this corner. And then they go all the way around into these storage containers. It's really cool to watch them moving. Um, and, that is really fun. And then in the center part, I have these things called assemblers. And um, they actually like make stuff. So they'll make like rotors and and like f wire frames for things. And you need they turn your components into parts. Yeah. And then you need to use the components to unlock new milestones and build stuff. And it's like so addicting. And it's like a completionist dream and also a perfectionist dream or maybe nightmare. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, Jess and I built we built a pipeline. We built the Keystone Pipeline. Um, we had to go get oil. And so I set out on this 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 escapade for oil. And I'm like halfway across the map. I'm like, I found the oil. So then we like ran pipeline all the way to the oil, all the way back to where our, our base was. Um, and, and now we have a steady stream of crude oil coming and feeding power and doing all kinds of things. It's It's quite a lot of fun. Anyways, so that's what the community is playing. What have you been up to, Shaleen? I work a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's been I've spent a lot of time with the, the printer and the copy machine and uh, uh, Excel, I understand, is is now video game adjacent. Been doing that. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's it's a lot of work. I did play a little bit of Fallout seventy six over last weekend. Nice. Um, I uh, I was mostly playing solo. Um, I I did the homework by myself one day, the the Fallout seventy six homework, and I'm really accustomed to when I play games. I'm playing with people that are great at games. You know, I'm I'm playing with you. I'm playing with Rick. I'm playing with Archin. You guys are all pretty good at video games and I'm usually not that good compared to you guys, you know, I, which is fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine with it. I understand this. I'm fine with See, it. See, now if Rick was here, we would commandeer the conversation and tell you why you're actually better at video games. But I'm going to do that myself oh, this okay. time. Oh. Yes. oh, I'll just sit back. This is the self-positivity conversation <laughs> because I I needed to do a daily off because I need all the points I can get for this Fallout homework. And um, so I started up a public team for daily ops to see if I could get a couple of people to help me because it's, it's hard to get the best time by yourself. You know, some people can do it. I'm not really one of those people. I'm usually just a shade over the eight minutes if I do it by myself. Um, by a shade, I mean like a minute and a half over the eight minutes. Uh, but <laughs> I, had, I had a whole team join me and they were all relatively high level characters, uh, at least a, a couple hundred on their level. And I was happy. Um, and we started doing the daily op and I noticed that 
that enemy kill ticker was only going up when I killed an enemy. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I mean, sometimes somebody else would get one, but I was far and away carrying the team for this daily op. Uh, I, nice. I am used to like you or Rick or, or Archon or somebody is the mama possum while the rest of us cling to the side <laughs> as the little baby possums. But this time I was the mother possum yes. carrying those those randos in the daily op. And I felt really proud of myself. <laughs> I, I almost soloed the boss. They did not contribute to the boss fight very much. They were all just dying faster than I could res them. And I felt really good about myself and I thought maybe I'm not bad at video games. Maybe I just play with people that are really good at video games. <laughs> so that was, that was fun. That felt good. Oh. Um, also, I, I think we reported a few shows ago that Bethesda is shuttering their launcher. There is no more Bethesda launcher. They are, they are uh, requiring you to migrate your games to Steam. Uh, which is not a bad thing. The Bethesda launcher was was an ill-conceived uh, venture from the start. Some would call it a, a farce. And it was a problem. It caused problems. Uh, we all hated it. And I went ahead and did the process of migrating to Steam. It was very quick and painless. It did not take very long. The only thing that really took any time was reinstalling Fallout 76 on Steam. Uh, and I found that I think the game runs better launched from Steam. I think it looks prettier launched from Steam. I, I think it's running smoother. And furthermore, as I, I put a couple of hours into Fallout 76 on Steam, uh, just picked up my save game and, and continued my progress. No problems there. I unlocked a ton of Steam achievements. Oh, really? Yes, it was it was just giving me loads of achievements because I was playing on my my high level main character. Nice. And I was really excited about that. And now I'm going to have to get the Steam achievements too. <laughs> Darn it. Oh, that's great. And uh, they brought the alien event back. Aliens are back in Appalachia. And I, I don't know if you remember the free range event. Mm -mm. The free range event, you heard cattle. Uh, you just you just kind of they give you a shepherd's crook, which I think is odd because you don't herd cows with a, a shepherd's crook, but you, you herd the cows back to their pin and you have to protect them all the way back to their pin. Usually they're attacked by things like blood bugs and wolves and a yao guai. And then at the end, there's a sheep squatch. Mm -hmm. uh, but now that Appalachia is infested with aliens, <laughs> you have to defend the cows from aliens who are trying to abduct them, which I, I thought was just hilarious. I, I really laughed at that. I love it. So I had a really good time defending the cows from aliens and, and feeling like I was a farmer in a B movie, like get away from my cows. <laughs> yeah, get off my lawn, my mm -hmm. porch. You dirty aliens. <laughs> Don't make me get out the hose. <laughs> uh what Good else for me what that's else on my game that's play. it that's it yeah oh, okay. that's it um yeah so what did i get up to i played some sea of thieves we did the takeover last weekend which was a lot of fun um it was a rocky start we could only get four boats not the fifth boat and mm. so i sail over to dagger tooth because that's where the fifth boat is and it's just a solo slooper and and I roll up and I go on my megaphone. I'm like, I'm like, hello, anyone? <laughs> and this this little dude comes running down the dock, right? And he's standing there and I get off. I'm like, oh, hi there. Like, um, you know, my friend and I are sailing on this sloop, but we have a third person who wants to join us. And we were wondering if you'd be get willing to give us your boat so that we can have two boats on the server. And... I get in the text, sorry, no mic, so he could hear what I was saying. Um, or maybe not, I'm not sure. And uh, so then I spent the next 30 to 40 minutes trying to convince him to give us our boat. And before I just left, I was like, oh my goodness. please, can we have your boat? Can we, come on, it, please. It's just like, you are you haven't even left yet. You haven't even like loaded up your supplies yet. It was really weird. I think it was, I think it was like a, a kid I understand his perspective, though, because every time somebody's ever approached me like that, they've ended up being hostile. 
And I, I would immediately have been suspicious and not wanted to be around you. I mean, absolutely. Um, if I was on a sloop by myself and just loading in and somebody rolled up and said, hey, can I have your boat? I'd like to have this boat on the server. I'd be like, yeah, sure. Because I just jump mm -hmm. to another one. Like, it's not a big deal. Um, little switcheroo. And you stuff, also but... know a lot about how the community works, though. Yeah, that's true. That's and true. if you're someone who's not as immersed in, in the community and in the game, even you wouldn't know that that's a thing uh, yeah. to to try and take over a server or to try and get multiple boats on the server. You would just feel like you were getting he probably getting, uh, didn't know what I pitched was talking an MLM about. or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we never ended up getting the boat, but it was fine because the guy seemed like not really much of a threat. Um, so we just decided to all sail the Reapers and Alliance our boats and then split off and do our own thing. So it was a really nice day, Tim. And... You should have just befriended him and added him to the Alliance. Well, I tried to do that. <laughs> I sent him a friend invite on Xbox. Yeah. But anyway, and I, and I said, you know, like, you're welcome to sail with us if you want. And then he went and raised his Alliance flag. Um, but I think he logged off after that. Mm. So... Then we sailed over to Reapers and we alliance and everything and we have a good we had a good team. Jess, um, Tim and Jess were on a sloop. And also Callie and Kit were on a sloop. No, Callie was Callie was yeah, and then and then her husband or boyfriend came in and Callie took over a different sloop. I had we had Grim and Frankie, Franco's Conina, on on another boat, and those two got along just like that like they had the most fun ever it was so They're adorable both lovely humans yeah, yeah i bet they would be a good pair yeah so they had so much fun and then i was on a boat with um agent panda who is this this lovely person who wandered into my stream one day when i was sailing and i was on a sloop by myself and i i said hey you want to join me on my sloop like you're welcome to sail with me and she hopped on my sloop and we sailed like all night and we fished, Aww. we fished for hours and we talked about everything. It was like wild. She is the nicest person. Um, and uh, she's now an honorary Canadian, by the way. Um, oh, lovely. She, she moved to Canada. Apparently she was supposed to be moving to Vancouver, but she apparently lives like 20 minutes away from me now. So. Oh, interesting. So you that's kind of coffee sometime. Yeah, I know. That's I was. That's what I was saying. So um, that was kind of cool. So we were on a boat together for a better part of the morning, which was nice because we actually haven't been able to sail together on a takeover. Um, I've always been the admin boat trying to like juggle people and make mm -hmm. sure everybody's having a good time. Yeah. So. You worry so much about other people having fun that, that you don't. <laughs> really partake as much <laughs> yeah so it was nice to just do sloops and and then grim popped in the because when we're in the discord we split out in the voice channels right so it's not like a million people all talking at once but um grim popped in later on and he said hey i got the fifth boat and we were like really he's like yeah it's this guy that that he just wanted to sail with us and got the the gold and the rep and then logged off and gave Grim the boat. So um, so we secured, managed to secure the fifth boat for the rest of the day, which was pretty much 75% of the day. Yeah. So it was a good day. We made over a million gold just, just in that day alone. Nice. And then I've been playing Satisfactory, which is awesome. I, yeah. I mean, everything that I said about it is, is already, it's just been a lot of fun. Just sort of hanging out and listening to music and building and there's there's all kinds of like um little creatures that try to attack you and end up killing you because they're super op um but there's like this whole world to explore and there's caves i don't know if you recall it's more than just building yeah 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 um i don't know if you recall but there's an arachnophobia mode that i may have told you about where it I remember you talking about it that. It turns yeah. the spiders into kittens. Oh. <laughs> and it's so funny because when you go into a cave, you'll hear meow, 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 oh. meow, 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 meow. You and these cats. Though, when you slaughter the kittens. These pictures of cat heads will come running up to you and like trying to attack you and you just slaughter them with the. <laughs> Do you feel bad? Um, yeah, a little bit. Except I, I know, I know behind those cat faces that it's, it's a drooling giant spider that wants to <laughs> eat me alive. So I don't feel so bad after. 
anyways, that's pretty much my gameplay. Yeah. And I think that's a show. We're actually like... That's a show. Right at an hour. Yeah, this show yeah. has been 60 minutes. <laughs> Um, don't forget the show is sponsored by Oak and Crow Coffee. If you head on over to oakandcrow.com, you can pick up a bag of We Just Love Coffee. Two dollars from every purchase of our coffee goes to the Children's Miracle Network. If you would like to send us an email, you can do so by going to info at we just love games.com, sending us a message through the through that web address. Uh, we're also on Twitter uh, at We Just Love Games, Shaleen at Shaleen L, myself at Vendertron N. You can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash we just love games, facebook.com slash groups slash we just love games. We're also on the Discord, chat after dark, check it out. Scroll down right below, listening live. You can click that link or you can navigate to our Twitch page, which we record live every Friday at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, twitch.tv slash we just love games. We're also on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. If you like and subscribe and leave us a review, we will shout you out on the show. That's pretty much it for me. Any last words? Word to your mothers.